which is for horizontal Sh shift alt h horizontal and shift alt v for vertical you can set up in your side and see the reference how it's happening i like this face a lot that's why i used it at the reference but you might use something a bit more visible where the background is much darker than the face and here the values are not that strong so it may be a bit harder to see one thing that i want to point out is that the front lip is usually a bit further than the bottom lip you can see here front lip is a bit further front lip is a bit further it doesn't have to be strongly on more stylized some of the sculpts people do front lip becomes much much further but just try to if you're not sure stay to this line i'll hide it for now and i want to push my front lip a bit further so i, I will mask it and push it just a bit further now the lip shape is actually quite important that's why we go to the bottom view the front view it may be a bit hard to see with this matcap so you can play with the matcaps what which matcap which matcap we can see clearly the shape and we can change it accordingly let's invert the mask and do the same with the bottom lip let's clear it out and we got something like that to make it more crisp let's use a bit of crease brush and make our crease a bit more visible and at the end i just do a little whoop swoosh up motion can smooth maybe if you like your lips are too big what i do to count from my reference how or protruding my lips should be is very simple you take a line it's usually much better using in photo editing programs but you draw the line up from your lip corner and see where it ends with your eye so you can see it ends the lip ends at where your eye iris starts If we look at mine, my iris of the eye going to be somewhere around this line of the mesh. Maybe you can make it a bit smaller, a bit bigger, however you want. And just check that line. It aligns pretty good with the reference. It can be a bit different. It doesn't have to be exactly like this, but just a general rule. If it works, it works. We have everything set up pretty well. Let's work on our eyes. I'll use clay strips. Go closer to the view. I'll turn on back a harsher view. And draw around the eye like that. Now Blender has a weird thing where... And yeah, just draw like that. Draw up the bottom too, don't be afraid. Again, use the references as a measurement. A lot of people see the reference, but they don't use what they see. Let me get a red color again, because we like the red color for some reason. Let's say this is actually our iris. That's why we're using this pair, because, because you can see these lines into the mesh. Let's say this is our iris, our eye. Why are you not taking a look at your reference? This is where the iris is of the eye. And you can clearly see the top lip hiding a part of the eye. And on here, it just slightly touching the eye. 
I keep that in mind while forming my eye. It doesn't have to be exactly this face. You, again, I'm just teaching you how to see what you should do, not how you should do it. So you can use the Western looking face and you can see that it is, does the same thing. A bit of the iris is blocked by the top lip and it's sitting around the bottom, bottom lid of the eye. When you draw this, you can use a grab brush tool and lift it up. That make it the iris touch. And I'm going to drag this out. I'm going to explain soon why I'm doing this. And let's smooth it out. Of course, it's going to destroy a lot of a lot of shapes but that's okay so don't move whole face too strongly so we can keep some of the shapes in i will use draw sharp and while holding a control i will make this harsh line on the eye let's do the same to the bottom and talk about a placement of an eyelid. A lot, a lot of beginners do mistake of having an eyelid like this. It works with some, some of a stylized faces, but the eyes are not like that. You can see it looks something feels wrong, but what what is wrong? I don't know. The eyelids have thickness. Yep. And the thickness is not that small as people may imagine, especially on 3D model, the thickness looks a bit different. And the thickness is universal through the whole lid. So the thickness in here, let's go back to the red. The thickness in here, in here, in here, should be around the same. Same is for the bottom one. Let me just draw on the surface. This thickness, this, and this should be around the same. But keeping that in mind, adjust accordingly. And just don't make it too small of a thickness. I'll use a bit of grab brush tool to drag this out. You can always play with the size of your eyes. Let's actually change it a tiny bit so we can learn how to. So let's select with all Q our eye and use a scale tool. You don't have to use these wheels, these levers, these things. Just on the side, if you drag while holding the click, it's going to change the size. So let's make it a tiny bit smaller. Let's use now move tool. This time we're going to be using a lever. Drag to the side, put it in front. And of course, when we did which changes, the eyelid thickness changed. So let's work on that. Make sure you have some, I would say around 30-40% outwards this eyelid. So around 30 to 40% of your eye. Of course, this number even can be different. If you, you can go to extreme, you can go to 10%. You can go to even 60 in some cases, like anime faces. Can be different. Yeah. But just keep that in mind to have this. We have a basic eyes. I want to move my ears a bit closer and smooth them out. 
and we have a very 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 basic bones of what the face should be now let's add the last few features that our face needs we are missing some bones we don't have cheek and here you can clearly see cheekbone protruding and on this shape on this reference, we can see the shape better. So I'll take a draw clay strips and start drawing from here. We pushed this a bit too strong. So now I will make it more equal by adding some of a mesh in here. I feel like my brush is becoming a bit too strong when we're working on now a smaller detail. We're trying to keep everything smooth and not too bumpy. I'll drop it to 0 0.4. And if you're using a mouse, I recommend you dropping to 0 too. I'll instantly smooth this out. And why do I have this third quarter view that it's called? Somewhere in between the front and the side view. Is because I'm looking at a profile of the face. If you look at this image. You can see that. Let me zoom in. That the face has... has this a bit of bump which is going to be our cheekbone and smoothly drops down in our face we don't have that so we definitely need to add more and you can see the cheekbone in here the purple image shows that the cheekbone does not only go to the side but it connects to your eye socket bone so usually what i do is when i'm drawing cheekbone i just add a bit of hair to make it even simpler you can draw like that visualizing the eye socket bone but for now should keep it not rush too heavily in front and just add it here actually make our cheek a bit different and fix some of the positions Again, you can look at the references. You can look at the face that you like here. Let's see how everything works. I have this PRF just for that. Okay, so we add it. I don't really like teaching people a lot about the face anatomy because face anatomy is not that difficult, not that complicated in terms of muscles. But when you look at the shapes, it becomes much, much more clear what's happening with the face. No, I would prefer if people would look at these face planes instead of this. Learn these planes, learn these shapes. Much, much more useful. And you can get this understanding. It comes a lot of from... retopology retopologizing the face you can you are putting vertices the way where it would follow a face muscle movement but when sculpting i recommend worrying about these shapes more let's finish up our nose so i'll add the bump like this 